Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new uh, shorter playthrough as I continue to highlight uh, some of the things from Marvel United. Now, um, I haven't done this in a while, but I, you know, I had my Streets of New York series, and we're going to continue some of that. And as you saw by the intro, we're going to have four characters in this one. It's going to be Nick Fury, Wolverine, War Machine, and Black Widow, and we're going to be going against the dreaded, though comical in my intro, <laughs> Baron Zemo. Now, I haven't played against Baron Zemo. There's a lot of characters in this game. I haven't played a lot of them. Like, I haven't played War Machine or Nick Fury. This will be my first time playing both. And as you can see, I have my game kind of uh, blinged out. And when I say blinged out, there's a lot of things that you're going to see in this that you will would not get if you just bought the game off the shelf. For one thing, most of the miniatures, the only, there's no actual base game miniatures. Maybe, oh, Black Widow. There's only one base game miniature in the play session here. All the rest came from Kickstarter components expansions and or uh, things I bought aftermarket, such as these little uh, civilian tokens. They do not come with the game. Normally, they're cardboard. I even have plastic versions of those, but normally they are cardboard. And I also have these uh, thug enemy little red ones as well as well as Doom Bots and other things, and I forgot to put some things out. I'll get them out now. So that is um, these skulls, which represent the uh, completion of the missions that we get to do, and they look, they basically, I don't know if you saw them real well, they look like that. And they're gonna go on these spots right here. So in these cases, when we defeat these regions, we'll get to collect those as part of our mission rewards, and hopefully uh, beat the day. Now, um, what we're going up against here, we'll talk about Baron Zemo in a minute, but Baron Zemo appears to have a bunch of, of um, bad guys that are with him, some henchmen that are with him that are, can't be defeated until we get rid of this card here, which says, as long as this threat is in play, henchmen cannot take damage. Now, which is interesting, and I'll show you something else, because on the henchmen, here I'll show you a Screaming Mimi for instance, it says Screaming Mimi can be defeated using these two things in a single turn. Defeated um, is different than take damage in my mind. So we can circumnavigate that card by actually using heroic tokens to defeat uh, the, uh, the henchman as opposed to putting three heroic tokens on there and then being able to do damage against them, which you know, depending on how you look at the, how you want to handle these characters, it would make sense to do one or the other. Um, anyway, I noticed that there are actually every that is the only card that is not a henchman. So uh, you have Screaming Mimi, Goliath, uh, Moonstone, and Fixer on the board as well. We'll see what they do when they come up. I'm not going to go over the rules. I've done lots and lots of videos on Marvel United. So you will get to see this in action. If you haven't seen that, go back to some of my first videos where I teach the game. Also, this mat here is the one that's uh, for the X-Men. You can see the big yellow X in the middle. Uh, the reason I like this one is because all of the, the uh, locations are facing this. Everything's facing this direction. And on the flip side, there's the blue normal mat, but all of the, the locations face outward to the players, which is great when you're playing with others, not great when you're filming from a single direction. So with that, like I said, we're going to get started. I do have a bunch of other things I could add into it, but since I haven't played against Baron Zemo, I'm not going to. I'm just going to play on normal mode as well, which means I'm not removing any cards to make it more difficult from the player decks. And we're just going to get right at it. Uh, now, um, the, the way this game works is we're going to take a card 
uh, we're going to play a card first from Baron Zemo, and then each of the heroes is going to get to go. And right now, as it stands, we're going to pull another um, a villain card after every four heroes. But if we, uh, three or four, off the look, I think it's three, three, three heroes? Yeah. Um, and then we'll, it, once we clear this rescue civilians component, we'll be able to do that every two heroes. And I don't know that rescuing civilians or defeating um, uh, thugs is going to be more important or clearing threats. Well, obviously clearing threats is very important because then we can use the ability of the location underneath it. All right, in uh, this game, we're going to have Baron Zemo. He's going to be starting in Central Park. Here is Baron Zemo. These miniatures do not come painted, and I'm not going to say I painted them ex expertly well. They're painted and look good on the table, and that's what I was after, so that you have additional color and bling on the table for, for when you play. It's more fun. All right, I think uh, we're good. We can just get started with our first card, and then we'll have a good old Wolverine go first, I believe, and then we'll continue on. Okay, here is Baron Zemo's deck. Now, I'm not going to do anything fancy in this playthrough and do a bunch of card overlays or anything, because this is a pretty short game. I think we're just going to enjoy it as it's meant to be played and watched, and we'll see how it goes. I'm just giving him one more shuffle because I haven't played with him before. I shuffled the cards, but I always like to give it a little extra go. And then we're going to start with our first... Um, what do they call them in the game? Uh, they call them... Um, not villain cards, but they call them... Uh, master plan cards. This is the villain's master plan right here. All right, let's uh, draw that. Now, here's what's going to happen. We're going to draw one. There's a starting space up at the top, uh, wherever it is. I think it might be way up the heck up there. Um, I'm looking for the starting space. It's way over here, actually. We're good. I'll show it to you in a minute. We're going to start by placing this villain card there after we take a look at it. So, here's where we're going to. We got a Baron Zemo card, our first card. He is going to move three, which means it's going to come and land on the heroes. But he doesn't bam, but he does do this. This is going to be really bad for us because we're going to have an overrun. Oh, look at that. This is probably a really bad starting card. We're going to end up with uh, bad stuff already. Uh, it says add three thugs to Baron Zemo's location, then bam. So we're going to start there. I'm going to put the card over way the heck over there where it begins. And remember, it's going to go around the table. And then we're going to first move Baron Zemo. So he's going to go one, two, three. He decided to come right at us. He was in Central Park scheming there, but he decided that he was going to go to Shield Headquarters and scheme there instead. And then he's going to next drop three thugs. Now there's one space for a thug, so we're going to have two overruns of thugs already. So we'll put one here, and then we'll see what the other two do. I'm going to get the other two out just in case we need them. And then it says special rules. If overflow for one or more civilian to or thug token can be can't be added to a location, give a crisis token to the hero closest to to it, going clockwise in case of a tie. Heroes decide. Okay, so that means that we're going to get some crisis tokens. Didn't think I need those these so early. I'm going to move these over where I can get to them a little easier on the table. So crisis tokens are going to be where are they? Man, these tokens are going crazy on me here. <laughs> Looking for some crisis tokens. Hmm. I'm going to put you on pause for a minute while I look for those. Okay, here are the crisis tokens. They're plastic, so these are not the ones that come normally in the game. And we're going to start by giving one of these to Wolverine. He is the first one to get a crisis token based on the overflow event. It doesn't say you give one out for each thug. It says if one or more tokens can't be added to the location. Give one crisis token to the hero closest to, going clockwise, in case of a tie, heroes decide. So Wolverine's the first character we're going to give to Wolverine. And then we're going to do what's called a BAM effect. The BAM effect is here on Baron Zemo's card. It says deal one damage to one hero in Baron Zemo's lo location. Give one crisis token to the hero closest to, going clockwise, and Okay, so, so everybody's there, so I can choose another hero. I guess, I guess I'll choose to give a crisis token to the last hero, which will be the Black Widow, just in case we're able to clear it before we have to give her cards. But we're also going to do damage to Wolverine. This is Wolverine's hand right here, and he does get this. As long as this card is face up in the storyline, it's not yet. I haven't played it yet. Uh, if you have less than three cards to your hand, it works. so we're going to be playing that. But I think for the first one... We're going to start, so he's got one of his special ones, Adamantine Claws. So I think all these have movement, though. This really sucks. 
I think we're going to get rid of, we're going to discard this one. And, and that means it goes into the, the back of his deck. It doesn't get actually discarded. And then his hand is is depleted because he took a point of damage from this BAM effect. However, we're not done because craziness is ensuing in the very first turn. We also have Moonstone here that says deal two damage to each hero in this location and one damage to each hero in the adjacent location. So guess what? Wolverine is already down to one guard. How do you think? I mean, this is a, a bad start, right? This is probably one of those starts. Sometimes in this game, you have to restart things. So, um, we'll keep... Ooh, we got to get rid of two cards for... I guess we're going to keep Rocket Launcher. And we'll keep this one. Uh, we'll get rid of... The, no, we're going to keep Rocket Launcher. Mm, do I get rid of... I, damn, this is going to go back of his deck. That's too bad. It's just wild. But I think we'll keep Rocket... These... These two. And then we'll put the other ones in the back of his deck. So we got those. Now we got to do Nick Fury. This is a really bad start because I'm not done. There's these other ones around him. I got to see. I have a feeling we're we're going to be we're going to lose the game in the first round, which is a bad showing for the game. But I'm going to show you this. Look, at, we're definitely keeping these two. So these two are going to go. I have a feeling we're going to lose the game in the first round because of weird circumstances, which has happened to me once before. And then for her, we're definitely keeping that. Got both of our interrogates. We're going to probably get rid of one of them. We'll keep these two. These two go back. However, let's check this out because now we got uh, in this BAM here, discard one civilian at this location from, from this location. Okay, that doesn't do any damage to us. So we'll discard one civilian. Um, that means it just goes away. Okay, no problem. Then we got uh, over here, we have Goliath deal two damage to one hero in this location. Okay, nothing happens there. So I, this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to end up being. And then we have one more. We have Screaming Mimi over here to look at her BAM effect. Deal one damage to each location in adjacent. There's nobody. And that's it. Oh, man, that was not as bad as I thought. I thought we were going to lose the game in the first round because I thought all these henchmen might do damage to adjacent spaces, but they didn't. Oh, I got one more. Hold on. I got Beetle. says discard one thug from this location, but there isn't one, so we're, he doesn't do anything. And now we're actually going to get to take our turns, at least three of them. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. All right, so obviously we've got to play a card for... I only have one card. As long as this card is face up and play the storyline, if you have less than three cards in your hand, at the end of the villain turn, you may draw up one card. So the first thing we always do is draw a card. So I have two cards. We're going to play this one and put it up in the timeline next to Baron Zemo. And that is going to be his entire turn. He doesn't get... He No, he does have... Um, so, his, so Baron Zemo's special rules are a hero with any crisis tokens at the end of their turn must use each of these tokens to cover one symbol on the bottom of the card they played this turn. Keeping any leftovers. Symbols covered by the crisis token cannot be used as actions. So here's the problem with this. We are going to cover uh, that the action there. Um, yeah. So we won't be able to use, so he has a heroic there, which would be great, because we could use it for something, usually to rescue a civilian or something, but we're not going to be able to. He can use it, but the next character won't. So this, this particular one doesn't have the ability to uh, do anything helpful. Like, for example, we can't do any damage there. So I think we're just going to use this heroic, uh, his heroic token, to save a civilian. That will go on our rescue civilians cards right here. That is good. And that also then discards his crisis token. I'm going to put it on for now. I'll take him off later when we get further into the... But we'll take it off of there. It's covering right now the, the uh, spot that Wolverine used. That was Wolverine's turn. At least he got to do something. Now we're going to go to the War Machine. Now, I have a rocket launcher, which is do two damage to an adjacent space. Now, I can't do any damage to... Um, I can't hit... And I can't hit Baron Zemo yet either, so I can't do any damage to these guys yet until I clear some space. So I think we'll play... I mean, I could shoot some thugs, but it's adjacent space. I can, I can I move... Oh, man, see? So first off, let's draw a card for him. So we're going to have three cards. We're going to have to play one, though. I can just do a movement. We can do his rocket launcher. I can do this one. I could punch a thug there. That would be helpful. Wouldn't hurt us. 
I can shoot into the other space and kill, but that's only going to get one thug, or I can move. I think, I think, and that, that heroic does mean nothing here at this point. So I think, um, I think what we're going to do, since Baron Zemo just passed this by, is we're going to play this card. It's a move card, and he has no crisis tokens, so he's just simply going to move there with uh, Goliath. Uh, there's not much else he can do. I mean, we've got to get some healing. We've got to clear that. He's trying. He's going to get over here and start trying to deal with this Master of Evil card that's, that's plaguing us. Now we go with Nick Fury. We've got Nick Fury's two cards. We're going to draw another one into his hand. Now this would be would be good, <laughs> except Director Fury, a hero of your choice may perform two hits. Well, that I think you might you do this one and do it as, in his space to clear the thugs off. A hero of your choice may perform. Oh, this is going to be good. So he's going to want to keep these. These are really good. Oh wait a second! Oh, if he could, he can move. Okay, we're actually playing this one for Nick Nick Fury. That's going to go in the timeline, and uh, that is going. Here's how that's going to work for him. First off, he is going to move. This is Nick Fury again. Uh, probably not a really great painted miniature, but it's painted. Um, he's going to move here actually, because then he's going to. That was he's using War Machines now. If you remember how this worked, you get to use the symbol of the card just played plus your own symbols. That's why covering those symbols up at the end of the turn is important. That's the, with Baron Zemo. Then he gets to use two heroic. He gets two heroics, and look at this. I think I think this is right. I'm not going to question this too much, but it says discard fixer fixer can be defeated by using these, and this specifically says take damage. As long as the threat is in play, henchman cannot take any damage. But we're not defeating. A fixer by giving him three damage. We're fit. We're defeating fixer by using two heroic uh, symbols. So I think you can do this. I'm going to claim that as a threat completed, and uh, we'll just put that on. There used to be on a space on the board for that, but we'll just put it right next to Baron Zemo here to show that hit, that was de that was uh, defeated. Please tell me if I'm wrong on that, but I don't think I am. Okay, um, because we we had to use his whole card to do that, but. At the end, you may search your deck for one card and set it aside, then shuffle your deck and place uh, that card on top. We also get this token, which means we've cleared a single threat. Boom. So we got one civilian and one threat. We also got this cleared. Uh, you may search your deck. Uh, we're definitely doing that. At the end of the turn, we're going to search our deck, shuffle, and add one to the side. Let's see if we get Director Shield, a hero of your choice, may get to movement. And so I think we're going to do this one. We're going to take this one. So that's going to go into our hand at the end of the turn, right? No, we place it on top of our deck, so that'll be the next one we get. Okay, no problem. Not as good, not, not that bad either. Okay, and now we've gone with three heroes, so now we're, Baron Zemo's going to go again. This, this could be really ugly. This is a bad, that was a rough start. Let's see what Baron Zemo is going to do now. Baron Zemo says move clockwise to the next location with the most uh, with them. Okay, so we're going to skip him here. He's not stopping with Fury. He's going to move all the way around to Central Park again. So he's come back full circle. And it says, Citizen 5, discard all thugs and civilians in Baron Zemo's location. Okay, I'm not sure what that does <laughs> to us, right? But it does say a hero uh, that we got the crisis token thing. I don't know what all this uh, he, um, stuff is going to do for us. Discard all of them in Baron Zemo's location. Okay, well we did it. So I have a feeling there's going to be some cards in there that say if you, uh, um, if there aren't any villains or, or thugs or, or civilians on a location, something bad's going to happen, would be my guess. I have not looked through Baron Zemo's cards to see what he's going to do. But uh, that was it. So we get to go back around to the heroes, not as an eventful turn. We got these two cards with um, Black Widow, Interrogate. And we're going to have uh, these, these oh man, I've really got to get her to move. Unfortunately, she what she has is two heroics, so I think we're going to do this. Yeah, see, and the, the defeat thing is in a single turn, so I cannot defeat Goliath, but I would only get one move that way, and I'll have two heroics. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I, this will this will be this will work. We're going to play this card. So. Um, that goes in her disc uh, on the play field here. That's, that's going to give us two uh, movement, two uh, fists, or a fist, and two heroics. So the movement is going to go is going to take us to here. 
Actually, I think we're going to do the fist first. We're going to clear one more thug from this space. Then we'll move. That gives us, and then two heroics. We're going to clear two of these guys from this space. This could be very bad if he bams again right now, but we have to get some, take some chances and get some things cleared out. So we'll do that. That's about the best we can do. And then I have to use her crisis token to cover up one of the symbols. I'm going to cover up the punch symbol. I think the move symbol will be more valuable for Wolverine. Okay, that was our first. So we're going to go back around to Wolverine here. Wolverine hasn't done anything yet. So we're going to go there. We're going to draw. He's only got one card, but it says, oh, at the end of the villain turn, I almost forgot his superpower. Uh, at the end of the villain turn, he gets to draw up the three cards. So uh, we're going to have him total of three, and then he'll get his fourth card because he's got his regeneration. So he's hard to kill. All right. That's, wow, look at all this. What do we need to do here? I think if we move there, um, no, that's not going to help us. Yes, it will, except I can't move there. I can only move one. Like, so I can't come around here and get Beetle. Um, actually, I got one movement, two of these. Nope. This is a drag. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play the, uh, his double wild. Okay, so that's going to go out. He doesn't have any crisis tokens right now, so he's going to get to take full advantage of that. So he's got a move and two wilds right now. Um, and I think what we'll do is we're going to go, we're going to move one to here. We'll use one of his wilds to move to there. He's got one more wild. He's going to then place a, use that wild to take a heroic and put it there. So how did he do that? If you look way up there at the top, I don't know if you can see it, we have a move symbol from Black Widow and then two wilds. So he moved once, used one wild to move, and then used one wild to place that on there. That means when, hopefully when Black Widow or it gets there, or War Machine, we'll be able to take care of that card and then be able to damage the villains as well, the enemies as well. All right, let's go. Speaking of War Machine, he's got two cards right now because he did take damage. And here's what we got. So we got a punch. So right now we have two wilds. That's what, what he has to play with, and he's got whatever we put here. Um, if we do a move, we could actually clear that card with the two wilds. So I think what we're going to do, this is in an adjacent space. I like that, or in the... Uh, that's not that great, actually. I can only get one of them. Beam weapon. One Here, we'll do this one. We're going to play this card. It says beam weapon in an adjacent space. So we'll play that there. He's going to fire off his beam weapon. He'll take out a thug here. I think that makes some sense. So another thug goes on our quest board right there. Now he's got uh, the ability to uh, move one and use two Hurrucks. So he'll move here. He will then clear this, uh, this thing out with two more Heroics. And now we have, at the end of the turn, you may swap one card from your hand with a card in the storyline. We'll see if he does that. I don't know, but we've completed two of these. And that means we get to take the skull. We're now 50% complete on clear threats. So as you can see, this game does go rather quickly. Okay, so we, we uh, that was three heroes. So that means Baron Zemo is going to go next. This is not fun. I'm really worried about what he's going to do. Let's see. Okay, Baron Zemo is going to move three and just drop a bunch of civilians down. That, this is a good card for us right now. One, two, three. So he goes back to the shield helicarrier. He's going to drop a civilian in that location and two on each side of him. So we're going to get two civilians here. Civilians are at risk there. And two more civilians over here. So, man, I'm glad we cleared some of the space there. We'll put that up, and that is his turn. That was, that was it for him. He just went and uh, made sure that there were some at-risk civilians around. Okay, so now we're going to Nick Fury. Nick Fury, I mean, we're all damaged. We've got to uncover the thing that allows us to heal. I just don't remember which one it's under. So he's going to get that. We're going to have to draw a card, and we're going to have to play a card. Um, a hero has two move. This might be really useful for us. So what has he got? He's got a move right now from War Machine. Oh, we're going to do this, obviously. Right? I mean, uh, that'll allow him to move a hero of your choice immediately does this. Uh, not that helpful right now. So I think we're going to do 
I can he oh I can I can physically hurt the here the villains now too. So uh, or the henchmen rather. So I think we're gonna play this one. This will give us a move, a um, oh a hero of your choice may perform. I don't know if this is that valuable to us right now. Hmm. How about this? We'll allow somebody to move. A hero of your choice will uh, get two moves, and then we'll get a, a move and a um, a uh, wild. So we can move right now. So first off, we're going to give somebody two moves. Um, I think we're going to give that to we're going to give that to um, who can do enough to take out Screaming Mimi. We need someone with two heroics. Let me see. It might be. Mm, not Nick Fury. Oh, it's going to be Black Widow, but she's she can, yeah, two moves to Black Widow. So she's going to go one, two, over to Central Park, where she'll be able to take out Screaming Mimi on her turn, which will be next. That's good. Then he still has a move and a, a wild to play. So he's going to move here. And for his wild, he'll do one point of damage to Beetle. There, he, he fought with Beetle, did a point of damage. Not so bad. Now that's all they get. Okay, um, then after that, we've, we've gone with Nick. That is his turn. Now we're going to go to Black Widow. We've got her two cards. Starting off damaged is really bad, so we're going to start off here. This is good, but we're going to play this card. It's going to give her a wild card and two of these. So Nick Fury's bottom portion, you don't get this. Pl the, pl the new he acting hero does not get to use the special ability of the, the, hero, the hero that just played, just the bottom portion with the token. So we're going to get these two. That's good. That's going to go right there. And then, uh, so we got two uh, heroics. She is going to immediately play those heroics on Screaming Mimi. Screaming Mimi can be defeated by using two of these in a single action. So we did that. These are gone from there. She uh, is in this location. We were able to solve. We got three of our four threats done. That is great for this mission. Now, these don't necessarily like when we clear this this just slides down it doesn't mean we clear this one it means we clear this one so he's going to once we clear one of these he's going to start taking more actions which is not great and then it says at the end of our turn here which is now uh, we may move up to two thugs or two heroes in any combination from a location so i think what we're going to do is we're going to take one yeah we're going to take both of these from here and move them here just so there's somebody there i don't know what happens if baron zemo triggers something where there's no civilians or, or thugs in a space. So I want to make sure there's something there. All right, and I think that'll be it. That's it, yep. Okay, that is two cards. We still have one more action to go, so Wolverine's gonna get to go next. He's uh, full health, of course. Gets to draw a new card, and he can beat the snot out of things right now. So I think what we'll do with him, he's got uh, two heroics right now. That that's okay. So we need a move of some kind. I don't have any way to move it. Oh, I can. Uh, I can. Um, uh, 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 what's he going to do with two heroics? Not much. Uh, this is not great. Mm -hmm. We'll play this. His wild. So we're going to play that one. I'm going to go on the timeline there. That's going to give him a Two heroics and a um, and a uh, uh, wild to action right now. So what do we want to do with that? I think I wish I'd done damage there, but it's okay. It's okay. We're he's going to pop over to here since he's he's not too worried about taking that damage. He uses wild to move, and then I don't have three. Man, if he could have got a free move, he could have taken out Goliath. But we're not going to get to do that. But what he does. What he is able to do is get two more civilians rescued with his two heroic symbols. So that puts our our rescue civilians card more than halfway done. So one of the things you want to try and do is balance it out so at least the first two of these get done relatively close together. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't get the healing location. I think that must be Avengers Mansion, if I'm not mistaken, um, or might be a, yeah, it must be Avengers Mansion because we got three of the locations open up and none of them allows to heal. So that's bad. However, that was three actions, so Baron Zemo is going to go next. And you can see we're almost halfway through our game. We're getting pretty close. Uh, he's going to move two and bam and drop a bunch of thugs down. So let's do that. One, two. So he moves to, sorry, moves to here with Nick Fury. He's going after Nick Fury. That's not good. Um, and then we're going to bam. Uh, so his bam, again, is deal one damage to one hero in Baron Zemo's location. 
and give one crisis token to the hero closest to going clockwise. Who is that? Clockwise, that would be Black Widow again. So she's going to get a crisis token, and he, Nick, uh, is going to take a damage. What card do we want to get rid of? These are both so good. I think we'll get rid of this one since we have some other attack abilities. That's going in the bottom of his deck. He is down to one card. He might get KO'd. That's very bad. And then we bam. He, this is where it might happen, right? Um, okay. Beetle. Discard one thug from this location. That's all he does. Okay, no problem. That was not terrible. All right. That's the thing that happened there. All right. Now, we're going to go clockwise around here to his bam. Deal two damage to one here on this location. That's going to be Wolverine. Wolverine can take it, right? He'll take this, these two, I guess. Two damage. Ouch. But at the end of the villain's turn, he's going to get go back up. So we're okay there. Um, and then it's that's it for that. And then this one is deal two damage to each hero in the location. And one damage adjacent. Uh-oh. That's no bueno. <laughs> There's nobody adjacent here. Just Wolverine on the other side. I think we have our first KO'd hero. I think this is going to be very bad for us. So Wolverine got KO'd. That means he has got no cards right now, except for the one in the timeline that will heal him, but that's not very useful right now. Which then triggers Baron Zemo's BAM effect again. Um, again, deal one card to uh, a hero there. That is Nick Fury. Nick Fury is KO'd. Um, now, the other BAM effects didn't do anything, so we're okay there. Nothing, nothing happened there. Um, there's nobody else to take damage, so we're okay. But, since we... Uh, Nick Fury went down, we would bam again. However, it doesn't matter. Baron Zemo isn't going to do anything. Um, oh, wait, he's going to give a crisis token. Another crisis token to um, Black Widow. So she now has two. That is bad because she's going next. Uh, no, actually, Nick Fury is going to go next. He'll stand up and get cards. But I think that's all he does. I don't remember. I'll have to look and see. I haven't, I haven't had heroes get KO'd like this. That's crazy. Anyway, that is... <laughs> That is not the end of Baron Zemo's turn. So now he's going to drop a thug where he's at. Um, that all happened before the end of his turn because he bam, bam, knocked people out. And then he's going to drop a thug. Oh, two thugs here. So we have an overflow here. We'll have to check this one out. And then uh, two thugs here, which can be placed. So his overflow, if one or more heroes, uh, civilians or thug tokens, cannot be added to a location. Give one crisis token. To That is going to be... Um, one crisis text symbols covered by yeah uh, ch ch one crisis token to the hero closest to going clockwise. Okay, that's uh, three crisis tokens on Black Widow. <laughs> wow, uh, this this took a turn for us. I haven't played in a while. I must be getting rusty at this game. I wasn't losing any of the games for a while. Let's see what happens. Okay, well during the uh, now that he's done, we're, Nick Fury's going to go next. So he's going to get up. We're going to draw four cards for him. Okay, which is good because that happens in the draw phase, which happens first if you look at the player turn order. After when you get to the hero's turn, the first thing that happens is draw cards. That's the, so he gets to draw four, then he gets to play cards. So this is not a bad thing. Um, he can take out. Do I want to do that? That will complete one of our missions. I don't know if I want to do that yet. I could play this and take it, take out Beetle immediately, but Beetle's power isn't that bad. I could, I cannot f attack Baron Zemo yet. We have to make him vulnerable, which requires two of our missions to be completed. So I think what we'll do, um, we're going to play, we will play his two wilds, because that'll give um, Black Widow a couple of wilds. Of course, she's not going to be able to do anything on her turn, much less than the, on her from her cards. Or she won't be able to give anything forward, so that's not great. Okay, two wilds. What do we do with that? Um, I could just take out Beetle but, and complete our quest. But then that means that Baron Zemo is going to start going every two uh, card draws. He's already doing enough to us right now. Do I want to hold off on that? I think I do. I think I do. I think what we're going to do first is we will move here. We're going to... Um, hmm. That does damage to adjacent heroes. I don't like that idea at all, not one bit. I might move here. We gotta take her out, is the thing. And we have to do damage to take out Moonstone and um, with the, we have to do damage, so I'm gonna get it. So Wolverine might do that, we'll see. Um, 
I think the best thing we can do with him is we'll take, we'll move here with his other wild. We will rescue a civilian so we can get this really close to complete. That's not a very good turn frame, but it is what it is. Then we're going to go on the Black Widow. Black Widow is going to draw a card and see what we get. And then this will be the final turn once we go to Baron Zemo's turn. Okay, so she can uh, move and do a heroic. Uh, interrogate, look at the top card of the master plan deck and place the bottom. We're going to do this. We're going to play that. So it's going to go there. Um, so what she has to play is two wilds and a fist attack. So right now we'll take one of these guys out for one of those wilds, or for her punch attack. But also we get to look at the top card and see if we want to place it on the bottom. Let's see, what is he going to do? So, uh, move clockwise to the, and then put Citizen 5, discard. We're going to leave that on top. Where will he go? He's going to go... Mm. He's going to flip around to the nearest location with the most civilians. So that will be to Avengers Tower. Okay, we're going to leave that on top, I think. That's that's going to be okay. We're, we'll leave that alone. Now she's got two um, wilds to do. I think with one wild, she could move to the locate. Ah, nah, nah, nah. I think with the, the two wilds she has, we're going to take out two of these thugs here and leave that place wide open and ready to go. I don't. I think the civilians matter, not the thugs. That's why I'm willing to do that. But look, we're getting all of our missions sized up and completed in good order. Now, though, I have to take this and place it on her thing. I think it's just on her thing with the crisis tokens. It says, a hero with any crisis tokens at the end of their turn must use each of these tokens to cover one symbol on the bottom of the card they played this turn, keeping any leftovers. So she only had one, so she still has two crisis tokens. Okay, and then we're going to get to go Wolverine. He stands back up because he was KO'd. Wolverine was KO'd. Do you believe that? One, two, three, four. So he's going to have four cards in his hand. That is not terrible. Let's see what he's got here. We need some damage dealing peoples. Or three. So he just gets nothing. Hmm. Uh, I think what he'll do, he's going to do adamantium claws. No. He'll do this. This is better. He'll do that. He's going to move here for his the movement point. He'll do one point of damage to Moonstone. And the reason I did that is because if we can get... She has to take damage. We can't defeat her with heroics. Though if... Yeah, and he won't, he'll, he'll take two damage there if she triggers a, a, a BAM, which we know she won't because we know what Baron Zemo's card, next card is. So that's probably... Okay, and then Baron Zemo's going to go, and that's where we'll end this episode. We'll have like two episodes to play out the game. Okay, so we're going to move Baron Zemo. It says move clockwise to the location with, with, with the most civilians. So he's going to move clockwise. So there's no one, no civilians, no civilians, no civilians. BAM, and he takes this civilian out. And that's it. That's all he does. So I don't know what the significance of that is yet. I have a bad feeling, since we have very few civilians on the board now, that with, he's going to pull some card out that's going to do something devastating around not having civilians in locations. But we're going to end it here, so that'll be the end of this episode. We'll get back into it next time as our four heroes, Wolverine, War Machine, Nick Fury, and Black Widow, battle Baron Zemo in the streets of New York. The problem is we've already had two KOs, <laughs> so not going that well for us. But I do hope that you're enjoying um, the game, and uh, we'll talk to you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.